before the FTC can regulate, it has to prove that the practices that it is deeming either deceptive or unfair are widespread in an industry. This clip is from 2002. Here, the Federal Trade Commission is discussing the criteria for changing the funeral rule. The funeral rule is federal law that applies to the funeral industry with the purpose of protecting some basic consumer rights. Essentially, the funeral rule requires the transparency of death care providers. However, it hasn't been revised since 1994. That changed this year when the FTC announced that the rule would be modernized for the first time in 28 years. A lot of experts believe, including myself, that the funeral rule is fairly toothless. The FTC files very few lawsuits against violators of the funeral rule. There were only six actions filed from 2000 to 2012. The FTC has requested public comment on issues relating to the funeral rule. One issue is whether or not the revised funeral rule should take into consideration new alternatives alternative disposition methods. Why is the FTC asking this question, and what are these new disposition methods? We spoke to six experts to find out, and it all starts with the American Civil War. The Civil War was when embalming was uh, initiated, but it didn't have anything to do with public health at all. It had to do with preserving the bodies to get them north because it was hot in the south. Dead bodies are not uniformly dangerous. In 2015, U.S. cemeteries buried 4.3 million gallons of embalming fluid in addition to the herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers required to maintain cemetery landscaping. Additionally, many cemeteries require that bodies be buried in concrete burial vaults. Though they maximize land use, each vault produces 1,890 pounds of carbon dioxide during production and transportation. In 2019, 45.4% of people who died in the U.S. were buried. That's an estimated 2,410,031,760 pounds worth of greenhouse gas emissions. Though cremations are considered to be greener, their ecological footprint is similarly notable. Cremated remains have a 200 to 2,000 times higher pH level than plants can tolerate. That's the bad news. But here's the good news. There are other options. We have a new vehicle with natural burial. This idea of returning bodies to a natural setting, unembalmed, vaultless graves, biodegradable caskets. All you need is a shovel and someone willing to dig the grave and uh, you can have a natural burial. There's no processes involved. This is a great option, but there's yet another contender that's gaining traction. Natural organic production is its legal name. The person is placed in that container. It looks like a big chest freezer with straw, alfalfa, and sawdust. We also invite family to be a part of as much of the process as they want to be. So it's 60 days total for our process. And then the family gets about a cubic yard of soil to take home. But natural organic production is only legal in six states. Though natural burial is legal, individual cemeteries often enforce policies that require embalming or vaults. Let's go back to the funeral rule for a second. Each of our interview subjects had a slightly different opinion on how the funeral industry should be regulated. Some didn't think that it was a legislative issue. I don't know that the FTC necessarily has to do anything. Maybe funeral directors need to do a little more. Others thought that current legislation needed improvement. If there can be a law that every funeral home has to offer every option available, then I think that would be huge for us. I'm in favor of striking down existing laws that prevent people from exercising their rights. Others still presented tangible ways that the government could encourage better practices. For example, a federal tax incentive. There are benefits through the tax code that we can offer to encourage pre-need planning and saving, to encourage people to think about this and talk about it ahead of time. There's another major roadblock in the way of progress. People don't want to think about death. This is a topic of discussion the public does not want to discuss. Before you even talk about green barrel, you've got to get people to be willing to talk about the fact that, that they're going to, uh, to die. It's going to happen anyway. It's guaranteed that you're going to die, and talking about it is not going to make it happen any faster. Though the traditional methods of embalming and, increasingly, cremation damage the environment, it would be naive to argue that they should be criminalized or limited. Funerals and burials are really personal affairs. If you're given a lot of options to choose from, you're making the decision that's best for you. Ultimately, we're advocating for individual choice. Americans should have the full right to choose the way that they and their loved ones are buried, regardless of how green it is. But there are ways that Congress could help. And while there will still be many that choose a traditional burial or cremation, it is important that they are able to make that decision after considering all of their options. Your generation especially is gonna 
probably hit us with some challenges in terms of what you value when it comes to memorialization and death care. Probably more like 50 or 60 percent of consumers are actually going and asking about it because they've learned something about it. There'll be like a cultural shift that will force funeral homes to offer things they generally wouldn't have offered before. There is no state that has laws that prevent natural burial. We have 10 states that require a funeral director to, to do some kind of aspect, and those are the laws that need to be struck down. There are a lot of states that say, to sell a casket, you must be a licensed mortician. Now pause to think for a second, whether in order to sell a pine box, you need to know how to embalm someone. I would say that a more informed consumer and more robust enforcement mechanisms for laws that exist, both would operate in combination to help improve the situation. I think we need to be open to innovation, but responsive to problems. Even in death, we're not made to do anything alone.